Hello and welcome to the I Love Me Lab show. My name is Gail Buck and I'm an NLP master life coach, meditation instructor, and a seeker of happiness. And each week we're going to bring you inspiring person or message to help you discover additional ways of self-care, self-love, and becoming a healthier, happier you. So thanks for spending time with us today and let's let the show begin. Hello and welcome everyone to the next edition of the I Love Me Lab podcast. And today I'm so excited to have an old friend here with me and her name is Beth Kaysner. And Beth is CEO of and is leisurely country horseback riding, correct? In San Miguel de Allende. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. And that's how I met Beth, um, horseback riding in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But I wanted to start first with, so this is a I Love Me Lab podcast. And sometimes, especially as we're, you know, nearing retirement or in retirement, we might just kind of not know what we're going to do next. And, you know, I think it's always really exciting when I when I meet expats, which is what Beth is. And when you decide to take a turn in your in the road and go in a completely different direction. And so I saw an article about Beth and it was titled um, How She Transitioned from Trailblazing on Wall Street to Trailblazing in San Miguel de Allende. So I wanted to start out with, with that story first. How did you go from and what did you do on Wall Street how did you get to San Miguel de Allende, Mexico? Well, thank you for having me on your podcast, Gail. And I'm excited to be here and share uh, my life changes with um, your audience. And so I had been um, a training director on Wall Street in the investment advisory services industry, managed money. And I was training director for, geez, over 25 years within different firms, managed firms, managed money firms. So um, I was uh, under sales, not in human resources. So I really, really was fortunate and enjoyed the career that I did have on Wall Street. But as I was uh, turning 47, I thought... I would like a change in life. I've been doing this business for over, I don't know, 25 years. What can I do? Where do I go? So I decided, um, since I had been vacationing in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, that I would uh, go back and um, live in Mexico. Wow, now, so that's just like a really early sort of retirement or switch at that time. Yeah. 47, yeah, yeah, because I was 47 at the time. So I wasn't truly retired. I was mm-hmm. not collecting my pension or my Social Security. So um, but I, I was ready for a change. I just I was so ready for a change. And so when I decided to move to San Miguel, it was like ripping a Band-Aid. I made that decision very quickly. I didn't want to drag it out because I knew if I dragged it out, I'd be hesitant. And uh, I had just made up my mind just to make a change. Don't be afraid. Fear is like, you know, everyone's big um, fear factor in life. But I said to myself, if it doesn't work out, I can always go back into Wall Street. But um, I'm glad I, I, I took a leap and moved to Mexico in 2007. And so I absolutely love San Miguel de Allende. I've been here for yeah. 16, 16, 16 years. years. Wow. And now when you left, when you moved there, did you already know people there? Because I know you had vacation from time to time there. Um, I actually did. Um, I had a neighbor uh, at the time I was living in Hoboken, New Jersey, working in Manhattan. So I knew a neighbor in Hoboken who retired in San Miguel de Allende. So there were a lot of New Yorkers uh, retiring at that time in wow. San Miguel. So and what a yeah. culture difference, right? What a culture shock or difference. Oh, totally, totally. From New Yorkers, you know, New Jersey, New Yorkers and and then coming to San Miguel with the Mexican culture, 
it, it totally different. And I embraced it. I, I just, I loved it. I loved the change. I loved the difference. I loved the pace of life. I was ready for a slower pace and Mexico spoke volumes to me. And San Miguel, when I learned that it was a retirement community and is still today, that it's mostly women that live in San Miguel de Allende. And are they either retired or widowed, divorced, whatever. But you mean in the expat community, not in, in the, the native, in the expat community. Oh, in the expat community, in the mm -hmm. expat community. So um, that spoke volumes to me as being safe, safety. Because if you, you know, move to a foreign country, you don't speak a language, you, you, you think about, well, what's the safety? And I get that question a lot. Is it safe? Is it safe? And so knowing that <clears throat> many, many uh, women live in San Miguel, San Miguel was built for women, I swear, but it just spoke safety and volumes. And so that's why I did not hesitate to pack up my bags and, and drive to south of the border. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, San Miguel Allende is like, if you compare it to a place in the United States, it would be similar to... Sedona in the expat community in that it's people that are more artsy, more spiritual, mm -hmm. seeking just kind of in alignment with that community. That's true. It's very yeah. artsy, very spiritual. And that's something that, you know, I, I never discovered in myself until I got out of Wall Street and, and moved to Mexico. And, and that's another thing. You're, you're discovering more and more about yourself when you enter the unknown. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially going from something as busy and moving as the environment that you were in. I mean, the, one of the busiest cities in our country to uh, Pueblo, really, to a beautiful Pueblo in Mexico. So, no, I, I just I just love that. And I love, you know, I, I visited several times in the expat community. It's sort of like if you're there, you know, you can integrate um, with the nationals and the people that are from there. And also if you want, you know, if you miss your American, you know, English speaking people, there's plenty there because a the percentage is what is it like 30% or something? Yeah. I think it's like 170,000 now, um, total, total that live in San Miguel and about 12,000 are expats and expats are also mm -hmm. Canadians. Yeah. Yes. Americans and Canadians. Okay. So now I want to talk about your other blazing trails. So you blaze a trail on wall street and now you're blazing the trails, running a very successful horseback riding company in San Miguel. And that's how I met you. And I don't remember, cause I think there were a couple different uh, people that were offering horseback riding. I don't even remember why I chose you because it was so long ago, but I did go back to you time and time again because your rides are so extraordinary, beautiful, and you feel completely safe. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But I want to know the story of how did you, like, were you a big horseback rider when you lived in uh, New Jersey? Were you into horses at that time? No, I never rode a horse in the U.S. And that's what's funny. I never rode a horse in the U.S. and I, I never spoke Spanish. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, yeah. So you talk about a flying leap. Um, and so I discovered my passion of riding horses when I moved to Mexico and my passion of riding horses is out in the country. You get me on a Western saddle out in the open space. It's just so peaceful, so tranquilo, so calming. It's just, it's, to me, it was very spiritual Yeah. and, um, and therapeutic, you know, being around horses, you don't realize it, but they're very therapeutic. And I'm in my happy place when I'm sitting on my horse. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> so what, I mean, first of all, what drove you first to decide to ride a horse? And did you feel safe going out into the country in a country that was not yours, in a language that you didn't speak? And so you're heading out there in a group or by yourself? Or how did, how did that happen? Well, and yeah, you having the courage to step into that. Well, you know, if you don't know anything, you get to be very adventurous. Mm -hmm. And I bought my very first horse uh, in this community where I do my business today with, and um, it's Boca de la Cañada. It's uh, a Nihito community, which is um, a communal, uh, communal land that is uh, for agriculture. 
And so when I bought my first horse in this community, who I found out through a friend of a friend of a friend, Mm -hmm. that um, the community let me ride my horse by myself. So I would ride out there for three, four hours by myself, not knowing how dangerous it could be riding by yourself. It's like scuba diving. Yeah, so that's, yes. So scuba diving, yes, that would be very dangerous to do by yourself. But you're out on a horse and you're not that well versed on horseback riding yet. So anything could happen with the animal or other animals on the desert and also with people. I mean, you don't know who you might run into out there, right? I think I made the community of uh, Mexicans very nervous. (laughs) (laughs) Probably saying, what is this American woman doing riding all over the place um, on her horse? And they let me ride on the land because I bought it from uh, the community. And um, eventually the Cowboys taught me how to ride. And so once I learned how to ride, then uh, one cowboy, and particularly uh, Catalino is his name, was riding with me for safety. And so that was, um, I was clueless, totally clueless. So it was very smart for him to start riding with me. And he was showing me all these awesome trails. And I just, he doesn't speak English. I didn't speak Spanish. And so I I turned to him and said, would you like to do business? This is so beautiful. I need to share this beautiful land on horseback. And um, he said, see, so we figured it out. (laughs) So, um, you know, I'm responsible for, um, you know, marketing, um, um, building the website, taking the reservations, social media, da, 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 which is what I love to do. And he was responsible for getting the cowboys, getting the horses, making sure the trails are clean and clear and safe. And that's how we started. We just started. And we've been in business um, for 12 years now. I started as a sole proprietor. I started as a sole proprietor when I opened up my business. Because I had to uh, cross my T's and dot my I's being uh, the first American woman to open up a trail riding business. I knew my competitors were out to get me. Oh, wow. Okay. Because what is this American woman doing? And And were the competitors uh, local people or were they other expats? No, no, no. These are Mexicans. These are Mexicans. And, and seeing that an American woman coming in and developing a relationship with uh, this great community, um, right. building the trust and the, building the respect that she is going to be our competitor. And I am. I am a competitor. So it was very important to me, again, to uh, do all the paperwork. And so I became a, social, uh, a sole proprietor. And then just a couple of years ago, since the business has grown, I became a corporation, a Mexican corporation. And I felt that the two cowboys that have been riding with me since day one, which it's they're Catalino named, and Catalino, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the other one Reyes. And mm-hmm. so I said, you know what? These guys need to own part of this business. That's awesome. They were just my cowboys. But I, I thought, you know what? They deserve it. They deserve to own the business as well. So in 2020, when we had the pandemic, that's when I started the um, paperwork with a lawyer, a Mexican lawyer, to become a Mexican corporation. I've never been a Mexican corporation. I've never been an American corporation. So it was very interesting to learn um, the process and, and all that stuff. But I'm really happy because um, they are so proud. And the other um, operators, they're family run businesses. So they don't, you know, include their help um, as part of owners. Right. And well, so- and even when I rode with you, and I think the last time I was there was maybe five years ago now, and I need to go back and I miss horseback riding with you, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I met Catalino, and I believe I met Reyes too. Yeah. Um, in fact, every ride I went on, um, you were there and Catalino was there and then there were other people and you refer to them as cowboys. So they're actual cowboys. Out oh, there. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah were, and I, and I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying they were born on horses. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I was going to say, because I love horseback riding and I am a terrible horseback rider. 
I mean, I get nervous and I, I'm just not, I don't know what it is, but I still love it and I still do it. And in fact, years ago, I went to a dude ranch in Montana with my brother and even, and I, we grew up with horses actually, oh. but it never became like fluid for me, you know? And I did a dude ranch with my brother. I went to a dude ranch with my brother years ago and I wanted to surprise him and show him how good I had gotten on a horse. And I took horseback riding lessons for private lessons for three months prior to the dude ranch. Well, first of all, the horseback riding lessons actually made me more nervous than ever because the, the lessons were near a busy road. And every time a car backfired or something, the horse reared and it was terrible. And then we went to the dude ranch and the guy knew that I was nervous. So he put me on the biggest horse that was there, this big old horse. And my legs wouldn't fit in the stirrups. So every time the horse would start cantering or something, my legs would come out of the stirrups. I would get nervous. I was like in a, in fact, the last day I totally bailed on any horseback riding. Now in, on the opposite side of that is riding with you and riding with Catalino. And my favorite horse is Loco, who I asked you the other day and you said he's still alive because he was kind of old horse too, but smaller. So he fit my body, super fast, super responsive. And the thing that I really, really loved is that the Cowboys are like you say, they've been riding horses forever. So it's like an extended part of their body. <laughs> so the horses are so responsive to them. But I was never nervous for a minute because they're right there. They know what to do. Anyway, it, it's just, it's comfortable. It's fun. It's the only place in the world. And I have ridden horses in many different places where I feel comfortable to canter and even gallop a little bit and you know Catalino by my side or one of the other ranchers by my side and it just is it's just an amazing adventure you know really thank you I hear a lot of that from um, the clients that I take that have ridden in other areas and they just feel so much safer and they love the cowboys because yeah. they are right on it <clears throat> so yeah yeah thank you that's Oh Thank my you. gosh. No, it's such an adventure. And you've taken me to beautiful places. I remember one place that I think is one of the trails that you go on that has this humongous tree. Oh, the Sabino tree to run into yes. La Huerta. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. And we go into a little town at that time. And yeah, I remember at that time I had my friend Beatriz from San Miguel and my cousin uh, Maya Cordova, who I'll do a little plug for Maya. She is the chef and owner of Garambullo. Um, a restaurant in San Miguel, and she also does a lot of events down there. But anyway, they they cursed, they loved it and cursed at me for days after because they hadn't ridden a horse like ever. And going so many hours, I don't remember how long that ride is. They were a little bit stiff after that ride, but it was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. We also do um, pilgrimages. And mm -hmm. uh, what's interesting is that I've had people contact me to go on a pilgrimage with us, which um, to me is is such an opportunity to ride <clears throat> with thousands of cowboys um, because Mexico is such a religious country. And we go riding to Crystal Ray, which is a three day ride. So I've had um, New York Times contact me, National Geographic contact me. I Don't saw the little clip. Um, you had it posted someplace and I saw it maybe on your website. Yeah. I saw the little, which is so cool. And it shows that whole pilgrimage and they mm -hmm. rode with you. Is that correct? Yeah, Did they they rode? Rode. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's three day pilgrimage. And so they both did a great job, the article and the, <clears throat> and the video. So they, they reached out to me, uh, which I just feel so privileged and yeah. House, Hunt, House Hunters International contacted me and <clears throat> they said there was a couple that were looking for a house and they wanted to do horseback riding. They asked if they could film us. I'm like, sure. Not knowing, not? <laughs> not knowing who House Hunters International was. So when I hung up the phone with them, <clears throat> I Googled them. I was like, who are these people? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Isn't that something? And how do you think people find out about you? Now, I saw you. You're like, what is your Instagram page? Horseback riding tours, SMA. But I was looking at your pictures there and, and just looking at your Instagram, 
mm. pictures just makes you want to go and and have a horseback ride with you. I, but I think truly um, people find me Googling, Googling horseback riding in San Miguel and I pop up. I do pop up. So I think that's how all <clears throat> National Geographic, New York Times, Health Center and Internationals, they found me. I mean, they've been, I guess that's how it's got to be Google. That's cool. And I think that you must get a lot of interesting guests. I mean, I was one of your guests for, for example, yeah, I'm just joking, but I remember, <laughs> one, I remember on one of your rides and we were talking about this the other day, it was a family and I cannot remember the name of the vineyard, but it's a, it's a very famous uh, wine family from California um, who work. I don't, I think they were on the honeymoon at that time, but just, I mean, just, I just think you probably get people from all walks, walks of life and some interesting stories that you must hear along the. Well, you know, the, the, another reason why I love this business is because of the people and people from all over the world come and vacation in San Miguel de Allende. San Miguel de Allende is a very big tourist um, on the top of the list of, of tourist um, UNESCO cities. So I meet so many people from all over the world that um, that's another part of why I love this business. Really cool people. Just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Now on your rides, I know that, I don't know if it's just for the day rides because I've done several different, I haven't done the Cristo del Rey, the three day with you yet, which I want to do, but on the, you know, the shorter day ride and the longer day ride, there's the option also to come back and have lunch at Catalino's mm -hmm. um, house and mm -hmm. his wife is cooking everything outside. And so you're eating outside and that's the most incredible, like homemade, real, you know, Pueblo, Mexico mm -hmm. food, authentic. Yeah. 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 I know. I just, I, I really, really lucked into this community of farmers that, um, and I started my business just tapping into the resources of this community. Mm -hmm. I had no, I had no overhead. So I um, tapped into the horses, the cowboys, and, and the woman who make the women who make these um, unbelievable, authentic Mexican meals. I just pulled it all together, but it was, it, it was all out there. Yeah. It all existed. And they so love it. Pretty interesting. So when you, when you think of moving to a new, a different place, particularly moving to a different country where you don't know the language and you don't, you know, you're just learning the customs and things like that. You managed to go there and without any overhead build a mm -hmm. profitable growing business that I can say from, you know, personal experiences, it's quite wonderful. You know what you do. Thanks. And I do get the support. I do get the support from expats and, and the Mexicans uh, of what I'm doing because I am supporting a communal um, uh, community. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm bringing the business out to them for them to make money. So it really is a win-win where they get to make money and we get to ride on their beautiful land. It's beautiful. Yes. Now you live right in what's called El Centro. So it's right like in the heart of San Miguel downtown, right? right? And you live in your area. There are not in your particular, like your street and your block is not particularly expat. Right. Filled. You're, you're more with the people from Mexico. Yes. Right. Which is awesome. It's really great. Yeah, um, I really threw myself um, into the Mexican culture and that's another reason why I moved here. I, you know, I, I love learning and learning the Mexican culture, the Mexican people. Um, really, really, I felt that I was just growing personally. I mean, the growth, I, I, I've changed. I've changed. Yeah. And, and I have no regrets of going, you know, back to the States. I really, really just have fallen in love with Mexico. Yeah. So, all right. Any single women out there thinking of moving to San Miguel de Allende? <laughs> what is the dating life in San Miguel de Allende for, let's say, a woman that might want to retire there? I would say don't move here if you're looking for dating. Uh, because 
<laughs> there's lots of single women that live here in this town. So I would say the percentage is 25, maybe 30 women to one man. So it's almost like Las oh Vegas. <laughs> it's almost like Las Vegas for a man. It's not, it's not Vegas for a man. But for a woman, no. Yeah. I, I wouldn't move here. I, I would I would move here for your own personal well-being and growth. And and I'm guessing for the friendships that you developed there as well, the relationships. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everyone's so kind and supportive. Yeah. And, but the town is growing and it's expanding. And so there's more tourism here. And so San Miguel isn't like it, what it used to be 16 years ago. But mm-hmm. of course, it's like any probably small Pueblo that gets popular and recognized globally that uh, it's it's packed on the weekends, holidays as well. <laughs> so what do you do when you're not out blazing trails? How do you fill your days? Oh, geez. You know, San Miguel um, is very social. That's another reason it's a big expat community because San Miguel is very social. There's so many social activities that go on here that really satisfies everyone. Um, there, we have International Music Festival, International Film Festival. We have Writers Conference. We have tons and tons of artists that have art walks. And um, it's just, it's so special of uh, the people that come and perform, uh, singing, playing, whatever. Um, there's some nice theaters here and there's lots of mariachis in the Hardeen. Mm-hmm. So, the center of town because the very yeah, center of town is a garden, right? And there's yeah. like surrounded by restaurants and, you know, shops yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Cafes and, and mariachis. So it's just, it really is. It's very cool living here. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, I know. I know. It's sort of like thinking, I mean, we don't really want to promote more people no. necessarily, but oh if you God. haven't been there, it is some place to see. Another thing that I like when I go there is that there's always the opportunity to take different, like, like uh, silversmithing or different art classes or, you know, Reiki and meditation. Oh, or Sculpturing. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And the hot springs. Let's not forget the hot springs. In fact, do some of your rides include visits to hot springs? Yes, yes, I do. I have a combination tour where we go riding in the morning for uh, two and a half hours, the ranch lunch, and then in my car go to the hot springs, which is like a spa. And it's really perfect uh, for people that are here only for one week vacationing and they're just trying to cram in everything as much as uh, they can. So it's um, been a really good uh, combination. Yeah. Now, there are a number of different places to go to Hot Springs. Do you have a preference? Yeah. Um, there's La Gruta. There's Escondido. They're right next to each other. And then there's Chote, which is more um, for kids because they have water slides. It's like a water park. Mm. So if I get a family that has children, um, I'll, let the, I'll take them to the water park. And there are adult slides there, too. But it's yeah. really fun. The kids. Oh, how fun. So I, I like going to La Gruta, but I like going really early in the morning when it's cold and crisp. Yeah. Plus, because they fill the pools every day. So when yeah. you're getting there and they're filling them with the hot, beautiful hot spring uh, water, you're getting there really mm-hmm. when nobody else has been there except for the other early birds. And so mm-hmm. and when you go into La Gruta, for me, it feels like you go into this, you swim into this cave and it's almost like going into a birthing canal. Right. And then you're in this dark cave. On sea. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're exiting, it's like, oh my God, you feel like you're almost like you're going through the birth canal. It's, it's so interesting. That's what, that's why I always imagine. I go in there and I meditate and then I am reborn and then I'll sit up there and I'll take my shower and have uh, breakfast where you're still kind of chilled because the air yeah. is cold, but it's absolutely delicious. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And I thought I'd have withdrawals because growing up um, on the East coast, I love the Atlantic ocean. Mm-hmm. Yeah swimmer <clears throat> and I thought that would be a problem for me but um it really isn't I just love these hot springs yeah yeah well and you can always take a visit to the ocean right it's not like yeah you I just got back, you from, just got back from where did you get back from I'm sorry I, I went to Tranconis Beach which is right next to Zewatnam 
Okay. Was it nice? Ah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And that's only a six hour drive. Well, it's not bad at all. So how no. do you feel driving in Mexico? You feel safe driving in Mexico? Well, it's interesting because I have a white suburban because, you know, I use that to pick up clients. Mm -hmm. And I do, I am a little nervous driving a white suburban because that's kind of a target for um, people wanting to steal cars. Sure. And, and it's interesting because I do get pulled over by the federal or the national um, guard mm -hmm. uh, to check if I'm carrying weapons or, or narcotics, narcotics. Um, because I'm a, you know, I'm driving a white suburban, which is kind of very popular of cartel. <laughs> yeah. Except usually there is that they're typically black suburban, aren't they? They're black and white. It depends black on white the suburban. cartel. <laughs> As you look at when I've been in San Miguel, where all of a sudden you'll see the three or four black suburbans go down the little cobblestone street and you go, hmm, there's something in my intuition that tells me just maybe you need to go inside, go inside. You know, only a few times I saw that, but it was a little bit, you know. Well, it's interesting because there was another single gal um, who was driving to Ziwadneo and she's there right now, but she had tons of questions while I was in Tranconas. How did you feel driving? you know, through uh, Guillermo, Guillermo and Jalisco. And um, I said, just stay on the quota, which is the highway with the tolls. Don't go off the beaten path because then you're asking for it. And, you know, being that there's a lot of single women here, a lot of single women drive to the beach a lot. And did you go by yourself? You drove by I yourself? Know, I actually um, had um, um, two friends, a mm -hmm. couple, a couple come with me. So I felt a little safer and, and my dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but but I was I was a little nervous. Um, yeah, because of the kind of car I drive, right? But it was fine. It was totally fine. Yeah, yeah, and I think that, that what you're saying is just staying like on the the toll roads and the freeways. Just also, it's going and being smart. You know, just being as smart as you can and being aware of things like that. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always, you know, I, I've. I'm from Mexico City and I've traveled a lot to Mexico and I always feel safe, but, but you do have to be careful because it is a bit, it, it is different than driving in the United States. And you do have to take some extra precautions. And I don't know, honestly, if I would have the cajones to drive from, from, uh, by myself. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, you know, but, but good for you. Good for you for stepping into it. Thanks. Thanks. Well, you know, it, having a Suburban is a, is a great uh, vehicle for a road trip. It is so mm -hmm. smooth. Eats up a lot of gas, but um, mm -hmm. I just, I, and I will go back uh, again. I want to go back uh, every year to the, to the beach driving. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, just stay on the quota. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so is Manhattan going to see you anytime soon? No, no, I, probably not. No. <laughs> I haven't even been to Mexico City, and I'm sure I would love Mexico City. Really? And that's like a bus ride. Yeah, and I would take a bus. Yeah. Oh, I've taken the bus several times from San Miguel to Mexico City. It's a nice bus ride. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've had yeah. so many friends that have yeah. gone like and stayed in Condesa, Condesa and... I mean, all these museums and... You know, La Colonia Condesa is where my mother grew up in her adult years. That's where my grandmother... That's the, that's the only house that I knew when I was a kid um, where my, my family lived in Colonia Condesa. Unfortunately, my aunt who still lived... This is, you know, they had that house my whole life. And my aunt who uh, was a surviving family member there that still lived in the house passed away three years ago. And then the, you know, the siblings... Um, sold the house but the colonia condesa is is so fun and the restaurants and growing up and visiting mexico city when i was a teenager and being living in la condesa and it was different it wasn't all the restaurants that it is now but it was still a super amazing i guess you'd call it uh it's not a sub is it it's not a subdivision but like a neighborhood or whatever you want to call that well so many people so stay in like yeah, in the air wow. breakfasts, I just love it. Yeah. Well, that's what well, I'm going to have to send you the address of my aunt's home because my <laughs> understanding is that the people bought it, converted it to uh, like an Airbnb or something like that. Mm. 
So very cool. I do want to explore more of Mexico. Definitely. There's so many um, cities I want to go visit, but I've just been busy building the business and just maintaining it that um, I think eventually I will, you know, be able to leave and Mm -hmm. just have business run kind of, you know, Hiring the right people. Sure, and now that Catalina and Reyes are actual partners, there's, you know, oh, yeah. there's more reason for them to, you know, hear your guests. And they take great care of your guests. So, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They love them. They love them. Yeah. So I've enjoyed so much having you on here. Thank you so much for taking time. I know that even trying to catch you for this in between your, your uh, trailblazing tours was a bit of a challenge. So I really appreciate your time. And this is the I Love Me Lab podcast. So if you were going to give a word of advice or wisdom to any listeners out there, particularly maybe to single women that are out there and maybe they're thinking about doing a transition in their life, what would that, what would that one thing be? I guess that one thing or two things um, would be uh, go, go with your gut Um if you're ready to, to make a change in anything in life, trust, trust yourself, trust your instincts and be open-minded, just be open-minded uh, for change and, and just be respectful to, to, you know, anyone that um, you meet down your, you know, on your path, uh, on your journey, uh, just be truly um, respectful and, and, and I tell you, it just, it, it all rolls into, it's so easy. It just, it just, it happens. Uh, so don't be afraid of, of change. Change is good. And I just can't stress more than just be respectful. Res- be respectful to everyone. And you will get yeah. that back. You will get that back. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And here's to your adventure. I actually brought up my, my cowboy hat, which I forgot to put on. Yeah, I think I wore that with you. It's, it's seen better days. It's all twisted up right now. But <laughs> Beth, thank you so much. I look forward to happy trails with you again. Um, okay. If people want to contact you, they can reach you at, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Horseback Riding SMA, that's for San Miguel de Allende, Horseback Riding SMA at Uh gmail.com. And your website is the same, correct? Horseback Riding um, SMA.com. Yeah, yeah. And I'm on WhatsApp. Yep. (laughs) Yep. And you can, uh, WhatsApp, you can find her on Instagram, you can find her on Facebook. We're going to have her links in the show notes. And again, thank you so much. And I look forward next time I go, which might be this winter. Um, when did, when do they do the Christ, uh, Cristo del Rey, which is, which uh, is Christ the King's, King's Day, day right? the Three Kings Day, the Three Kings Day, the Three Kings Day, which is January 4th, 5th, and 6th. But we also do the blessing of the horses in San Miguel, and that's in, that's end of September. Did you mm, ever ride? That I have done with you. I thought so. And I want to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Just real quick. I know we're wrapping up the show, but you guys got to hear this because it's so cool. So basically uh-huh. they ride all the, the, like how many cowboys participate in this? Probably about 500, about 500 in, in the blessing of the horses uh, in San Miguel. Yeah. So they they ride into the center of town, which you have the big cathedral, right? Well, you tell the story. It's amazing. Oh, it's just all these cowboys that are coming out, out from nowhere, from their pueblos. And, you know, we start in Boca de la Cañada. And then by the time we get into San Miguel, um, there's like three or 400 cowboys because they've all joined the procession with us. And so we ride up Canal Street. We take the horses um, into the Hardine in front of the parroquia for a one hour service. And they do get blessed with holy water. And so yeah. it's really cool. And I do have some, I think, photos uh, or a video um, I do on my website. It's just very cool to watch. Uh, yeah, it, it's so cool. And it's so cool whether you're riding or even if you happen to be there watching, it is extraordinary to see 
yep. all the horses and all the cowboys and the service going on. It's it's truly magical, yep. you know. Yeah. So so yes, I, that that sounds like that's a do again or the Cristo del Rey is. I'm sorry. I thought you did that with us. That, yes, that I did. That was amazing. Yes, that was good. amazing, and I got to actually see it one time, and then another year I participated in in it with you. So. Anyway, thank you. And I know that uh, we said goodbye and then we came back, but you guys just had to <laughs> you can see it. So I'm going to recommend that you go to horsebackridingsma.com uh, and check out the little videos that uh, Beth has on there. And I'll tell you what, if you've had any inkling to go to Mexico and you want to see a beautiful Pueblo, I recommend going to San Miguel de Allende and you've got to fit in the horseback riding because she's going to take you out on these country adventures through the desert, through the water through the cobblestone streets like you've never, ever experienced before. So Beth, I'm sending you a big heart bomb and another one for all of our listeners. And thank you and happy trails to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to this conversation. If you enjoyed it and want more information on our guests and resources, please visit ilovemelab.com. And please, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to subscribe and share with a friend. Hey, there's more great episodes to come. So until next time.